Now, YouTube has actually been going pretty successfully in the last little bit. Now, I've been able to grow my following a bunch and have new opportunities. I've had onset experiences in different freelance jobs based on this channel. And as things are growing and as things have grown, uh, not all that glitters is actually gold. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how YouTube ruined my filmmaking career. <sighs> we'll get there. Now, for those of you guys that are new to this channel, or those of you guys that don't know me very well, I worked a lot in the fitness industry. I had been a competitive bodybuilder for like a very short amount of time. I played college sports, but I also worked for a fitness magazine running some events. Over time, I started having interest in cameras and photography and video. And over time, at my graduation in college, I bought myself a camera in which I was going to be a fitness influencer, which would have been hilarious. In the universe, there's somewhere where that exists. And over time, what ended up happening is that clearly didn't work out for me. I kind of didn't care as much and also didn't want to have to do all the things that it took to become that. But instead, I still had a camera and still had interest and I decided to turn into doing video for other fitness influencers because I thought that would make more money. And turns out it did. It did make a bunch of money and I did end up working with a variety of companies and influencers and different brands in terms of being a videographer but also working as a photographer as well. I was able to work with a bunch of different folks and even land my first national cover which sold like 65,000 copies in Canada which was a really good highlight for my experience as a photographer to actually have physical media that you could kind of turn to in terms of your work. Now over time I kind of felt this weird thing where I wanted more from my content creation. I wanted more from my my photography. I wanted more from my videography or my filmmaking or whatever you want to call it. I wanted to learn more things because I didn't want the stuff that I made to look the same as other people that were around me. And one thing that I decided to do was turn into more filmmaking, learning more about cinematography, learning more about lighting and camera movement and everything else to make my images and my work look more <laughs> cinematic. Now, I would love to tell you that this is a story about how I became this esteemed director in the fitness industry. And in some levels, it worked out well. I had stuff that looked very different from everybody else. But in some regards, you don't realize that a lot of things in the fitness industry aren't what they seem. Now, what I, I mean by that, I don't mean there's some nefarious evil plan to take over the world going on. But what ends up happening is that as I started to learn more about cinematography and lighting and all that other stuff, my price went up because it, naturally it's going to. I'm not going to bring a full cinema camera rig, I'm not going to bring a full lighting kit and all this other stuff and get paid the same as if it was a couple years ago when I was only making a couple hundred bucks per shoot. And what ended up happening was A, it's nice that a lot of clients kind of weeded themselves out, but what sucks is when you find out that a large chunk of the industry is kind of like that where I don't think that industry is ready for that level of production. Uh, you kind of run yourself into a little bit of a corner. What ended up happening was I learned so many things about being a DP in cinematography, but very rarely do I get to do that in a paid environment because a lot of the companies I was working for would tell you they don't have the budget or they don't have the time or it seems too complicated or they need this video real quick. And that kind of became a little bit discouraging and I felt a little bit lost. And that's not to say I didn't get opportunities in the industry. I got to work with one of the biggest athleisure companies in the world. But what ended up happening is that those opportunities became fewer and far between. And even working with a company like Gymshark, it didn't necessarily mean that all the other athleisure companies that are available are running to knock on my door to get me to shoot their next project, especially for somebody that lives in Canada where a lot of these companies are based in the United States. Now, what ended up happening somewhere down the line is I started turning into the social media side of things. I had acquired a bunch of knowledge that I practice on a regular basis that I could teach back to people like the viewer that's watching this video right now and that became a little bit of a turning wheel. And as I started to do that every now and again, I didn't take it that seriously, but I still needed money. So I had worked with other people that ran their own YouTube channels that really needed the video work to be done. And I would work as a camera operator or getting thumbnails with somebody else or a BTS videographer, or whatever I could get as a filmmaker in order to pay my rent, but then also feel the ability to practice my cinematography. Now, one thing I also started to find out was there wasn't a gigantic difference between the people that I was working for that were successful on this platform and myself. At the very least, I think I share information decently well. I think I have something to say. And if not, you guys probably let me know because there's comment sections and people are mean. But there was things that I wanted to teach. There's things I wanted to talk about. And not just how to use the gear itself, but how I would use it in a variety of different environments, how to set it up and what kind of gigs that you can get or how you use it on certain projects. And I was still working freelance between the YouTube stuff and working with other YouTube and things like that. So it kind of was a nice system where
there. If I learned something on set, I would teach it back to you guys. And this is where we are now. We've gone from having just a few thousand subscribers a year ago, and now we are close to 25,000, which is a lot more people than I expected. And with that came networking opportunities and working with different brands. And the brand thing actually became particularly interesting because some of the budgets that I was getting from, or some of the budgets I do get from things like brand deals or sponsorships or mid rolls or something in that area ends up paying more than the freelance work that I was doing, which creates a separate problem because I need the freelance stuff to teach you guys the skills as you become freelancers yourselves. But if I get paid significantly less to do the freelance work as it does to do dedicated reviews for stuff that I was going to buy or use anyways, what would be the point of doing the freelance thing? And I think that's where I kind of got into this weird spiral where, whereas YouTube for as great as it is, kind of ruined the trajectory of my filmmaking career. Because now that I say no to a lot of these jobs because they don't nearly give me the financial resources as doing a sponsored video, I'm also not working in a filmmaking set in a capacity where there is a client or an end user. And a lot of things is just me practicing things and teaching them back, which still has a ton of value, but it doesn't feel like there's any stakes, which some people might experience because not everybody's making videos for YouTube clients or sponsors, which kind of makes this weird uh, vortex of feeling a little bit lost. And where it is is that the channel is definitely not enough where I'm balling and I can go and spend a ton of money to make different projects. But at the same time, it's enough money that a lot of the freelance stuff that I was doing before, I've priced myself out of. I've effectively priced myself out of most of the fitness jobs that I used to work just a year and a half ago. And those were a lot of things that I would teach on on this channel. And I found that, yes, you could always take a pay cut in order to make more content. But then I also started to realize that when you kind of take away the financial barriers or the financial needs from some of these jobs, kind of never wanted to do them in the first place. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing for me. And this is where I kind of feel like the separation between where YouTube is as a filmmaker and where your actual filmmaking as a freelancer is, uh, something has to give. And right now I'm in a little bit of a limbo. Uh, do I take more sponsorship deals on things that I actually like, believe in, I like talking about? And there's a nice intersection because I get financial resources to talk about things that I like. Or do I say no to more of those things to work more as a filmmaker? But then when I think about it, I would only be doing the freelance stuff against my better judgment just to prove to an audience I barely know that I'm a real filmmaker and a real freelancer. So in all of this and trying to figure these things out and as I'm just kind of venting things to you guys and some of you guys might never experience this in your entire life. Um, the dichotomy between choosing a social media influencer, teacher, educator type of things and being a freelance filmmaker are sometimes going to be diametrically opposing to each other. They're sometimes going to be in this conflict and you're gonna eventually have to make a choice of do you wanna go all in as a YouTuber? And if you do, how do you continue to do the things to teach the audience that you garnered in the first place? Um, that's something I'm struggling with right now. And I wish I could tell you that everything's great. The end of the story is I figured out exactly what I'm gonna do. Uh, I haven't, and I don't know if I will. And for today's story time, Super Fan Sunday, whatever you wanna call it, uh, I'm here to tell you I don't have all the answers and sometimes you might not either. But it's one of those things where you roll the punches and you try to find a balance and who knows, maybe YouTube didn't ruin my filmmaking career. Maybe it actually made it better because it helped me see the things that I really wanna do and some of those other freelance jobs that I was getting paid for but just didn't have any interest in or stuff that I had no business doing in the first place. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. At the very least, you learned something. Or if you kind of feel the same way, you're kind of in this weird in-between, leave a comment down below as to what your situation is. Cause I don't know, YouTube's kind of lonely and I feel like a lot of things I'm experiencing, I'm probably the only one experiencing it. That being said, see you guys next week. Peace.